Hey, hello and welcome to this really fun tutorial about Remotion. So if you want to learn something cool, you have to come with me through that door. Because today I'm going to show you how you can make this awesome transition. Just follow me into After Effects. And in here, as always, if you have any questions about this tutorial or about After Effects or about visual effects or any question that you can think of, then just leave me a comment down below and I promise I will answer all of them. So what is it that we are going to create today? You could see that as a part two of my last tutorial where I showed you how to nest one clip in another one. So if you haven't watched that one, check it out. But I can also tell you that you don't need to watch that one to follow this tutorial. So I'm going to show you how to shoot two different shots and then combine them so that they look as they were shot in one take. And as a special bonus in today's tutorial, I'm going to have a quick look on the Roto Brush tool, which will help you in so, so many cases. And I'm going to show you real quick how powerful that is. So stick with me for that one. And I'm also going to show you how to render out a video with an alpha channel. And I'm going to show you a few different ways of doing that because I was asked that a lot in the comments and we need that actually for this tutorial. So let's do this. At first, let's take Take a look on the footage and I'm going to drag both of them out onto this new composition icon. And now we get this info box over here and we can create a single composition or multiple compositions. So that means each clip would be in a separate composition, but we want to create one composition. And then we can also choose if you want to sequence the layers. That means they are not on top of each other, but in the timeline, they would be behind each other. And let's actually do that so you can see what this is doing. So there we have it. There's the first clip and I can scrub through this. That's me coming up the stairs, walking through the door. That is what I actually filmed. I just pushed the door open and the camera just fluidly goes through the door and then comes to a stop. And let's check out the second clip. We basically start where I open the door. So the camera is walking straight and then I try to mimic as I would just have passed the door. And I'm obviously standing outside in this nice winter wonderland. Perfect. So we are almost done. Let's quickly search for the point in time where they should overlap. And I'm opening the door over here so I can set a marker by clicking on that icon. And I could also set a marker on the layer by clicking on the layer, hitting the multiply sign or the star sign on your numpad. And then you have the marker on the layer. Okay, now let's bring it to 55%. So therefore I'm hitting T for opacity on the first clip and now I'm just watching when I leave the frame and there I come in. So that looks pretty nice. And when I play this back, this is what it looks like. So I'm opening the door and walking through the door. Perfect. So we're almost done. First thing that we have to do is to roto out what we see behind the door. That's super easy. When you watch it, it's always just in the shape of a square. So that's what I'm doing now clicking over here on the rectangle tool and simply create a rectangle over the part that I want to roto out. And over here, I set it to subtract. Maybe at the moment I'm not even set it to subtract, but none. So in that way, we can see what we are doing. So if we hit M, we get the mask path option. And I can click over here to set a keyframe. Now I'm simply adjusting the points and then just go forward a few frames and readjust the points and you see this is a really quick method of doing that and at some point the other part of the door comes into frame so I also have to do it over here and I think this is about the last frame that I have to do here so when I go one frame back the door should be closed. So what I'm doing here is I'm double clicking on the mask to select all the points and simply drag it out of the frame. Okay, now let's bring this to the end. By the way, you can also click on one line of the mask and then you can adjust that. 
And I would also recommend you to watch my five minute mask tutorial video where I'm going to show you everything you will ever need to know about masks, as I said, in just five minutes. So that looks pretty nice so far. And maybe you're thinking, okay, we have this like blurred line. Maybe we can also go into the mask and hit F and feather it a little bit, but I'm not going to do that. I'm simply applying motion blur to the layer by hitting on that checkbox here. And by doing that, it automatically gets turned on for the whole composition. So you can turn it on and off here for the whole composition. And you see, it's taking the original motion of the mask and so to say from the original door and calculates that motion blur. Perfect. So now let's maybe set our in point to somewhere around here and I can hit B for beginning and let's play this back what we have so far. Yeah, looking nice. One reason why it already looks good is that I took care that the horizon stays the same in both of the clips. And if you watch this tiger tutorial, believe it or not, there's an extra part in it about horizon and camera settings. And you can easily do that by adjusting, or in other words, not adjusting the tilt of your camera. So have the tilt at exactly the same angle in both of your shots to make two shots match perfectly. So definitely check that one out. And now when we scrub through it, we can see the door opens. And now I'm coming in from behind the door. And this is exactly what we're going to fix now. And as I told you in the beginning, we are going to take a look at the Roto Brush 2 tool. This is a super awesome tool for quick and dirty, and, or maybe not even dirty, but for quick and clean Roto within After Effects. And I used that tool so often during the last few weeks, basically since the new version came out last year. And it's really handy and it's a huge time saver. So let's Roto me out so that I'm on top of the door. And after that, I'm going to show you some really cool tricks for color grading to make this one really look way more convincing than it is at the moment. Okay, so, but we're not directly starting with the Roto Brush 2 tool on that shot, but I'm quickly going to show you the power of the tool because you can Roto out stuff that you could not do before. For example, let's take a look at this picture I took of myself on a bad hair day. And can you see all those details in here? And if I would ask you to roto that out, you would maybe think that I'm insane. Now let's quickly try to roto that one out. And hey, some of the skeptics may say now, okay, you have like a really clean background in one color. So the algorithm of the tool will make a pretty good job. So maybe I already fooled you because that shot is already rotoed. So this is a fake shot. You don't believe me? So well, here's the original shot. And I specifically took care to give it a hard time. So there's like all this gray in the background, as in my hair. And we have some different colors. And we have this dark part, my lamp, in the background. So nothing too easy. So for a shot like this, I would recommend to trim the composition to just one frame because it is just one frame. And now we are going to open up the Roto Brush tool. And this tool you can find over here. It's this brush that paints on this person here. And there you have it, the Roto Brush tool. And you see that nothing happens when you click on it and we don't even have the effect applied. Hmm. That's strange. And this is because you can't paint on a composition, but on the layer. So to do that, simply double click on the layer. And here we have it. You can already see this green icon and I can paint with that on my face and just give it a quick indicator what I want to roto. And by default, this is what this looks like. And I can add stuff to it by simply painting again and let's maybe overdo it here so I can show you. And I can remove stuff by hitting the Alt button. And by the way, you can change the size of the brush by hitting down Control, clicking on your mouse 
and dragging it left or right. Okay, but now you see that mask does not look that satisfying at the moment because I want to get all the details of my hair in. And we can do that by going to the tool again and going to the refine edge tool. So now we have defined an edge and now we want to refine it. And for that, I can simply paint over the part that I want to refine. And once it has calculated, it gives me this black and white image. So that's really cool. I'm just painting over the parts where I want the roto brush tool to take care of. And look at that. So also that hair needs to be worked on. So I think you got the idea. I'm basically painting over all the parts on the edges with most of the detail to tell the refine edge tool where it should take special care of. Okay, and once you try it out, you see that it always takes some time to calculate all of this. And remember, in just a few seconds, we're doing all of that to a video file, not a still image. So once you're happy with what you have done, and remember, we also have the body rotated out with just a simple shape and then all the hair with the details. So once you're happy, just click the freeze button and all the frames you have worked on so far will get frozen or basically everything we have done will get baked into the effect so it doesn't have to recalculate it for each frame. Perfect. And now we can also click on those buttons down here. They are simply here for you to help you as a reference. So here you can see it with a pink color. Here you see an overlay. Here you have a black and white representation. So once we are back in the composition, it automatically cuts out the shot or in this case the image. Hey, and remember, now this one is an effect that you can turn on and off. And you see, you have the roto brush mat. Remember, that's the pink line we have created and you can feather that, shift the edges, reduce the chatter and so on. Crazy stuff. But you can also refine the refine edge mat which is super, super powerful. You can do something like decontaminate the edges, which helps in many cases where you want to apply a background with a different color. You can even add motion blur to everything. Of course, this will also just make sense when we use a video. Okay, and just for the sake of this, let's quickly also add a blue background to it. And you see, when I turn this on and off, that was the image that I shot. And this is the image that we have now. And also remember, we can still fine tweak all of this. And let me tell you something. Honestly, I don't know how to do that kind of shot without the brush two tool. Just, just look at that hair. I have no idea. If you have any idea on how to do that without the roto brush two tool, let me know in the comments. But now let's close this and we switch back to our transition. And let's take a look. Here's where the door is out of frame. I'm quickly setting a marker and I'm coming into frame over here. So that means I can quickly duplicate that layer and simply drag the endpoints over here and call this the roto. And now we simply roto me out as I showed you with the roto brush tool and this will be the game changer. But remember, we still have to work on all the color correction later on. But first things first, again, we click on the roto brush, double click on it, and I'm going to paint over the part that I want to remove. And I'm just trying to get it as good as possible. And you see, this is the time span and you can see that that one frame in green is already calculated. But as before, I'm also going to refine the edge and I'm simply drawing around the hair detail. Hey, look at this. And now, what are we going to do now? We are at the last frame at the moment and I want to calculate all the other ones. So I just move the playhead one frame and it automatically analyzes that one. And hey, if something goes wrong in here, you can still paint on that frame. Like for example, if I'm a bit picky, I want to also add that part of the finger. Okay, looks better now. And now that also goes into the calculation. And I'm quickly skipping through those frames and have a look at the hair. And do you see that? There's a tree 
in the background. I have no idea how After Effects does this, but it just looks great. And maybe I will also take that hair, perfect, and go through the last few frames here. And one more. And as I told you before, now we have done that. Now we simply click on freeze and it's going to bake all of this into the effect. So you see it's now freezing frame four, five, six, seven, and so on of 17 frames. And that takes me like 10 or 15 seconds because you are watching this in real time. Perfect. Now back into our composition, you see, I am now moving over the door and you also see that this does not look perfect at the moment because you see the bright edges, but hey, I can, for example, turn on motion blur, which almost makes it worse, but that's simply because it extends something to it and we want to remove something. So let's maybe shift the edges a little bit and maybe also feather this a little bit more. And one thing that I want to do now, which I told you before, is I can decontaminate the edges. Have you seen that? Now it neutralizes the colors in the semi-transparent areas, which is the motion blur, of course, and around the edges. So that really helps a lot. And I can also go into the motion blur settings and make a higher quality if I want to. That also helps a lot over here. And now let's quickly watch this. That's actually pretty awesome. And you may have noticed that I have a pretty strong shadow over here. And I also want to have the shadow when I'm passing the door. So let's quickly take care of that. And we can do that with a drop shadow. In the effects and presets, I type in drop shadow and apply it to the roto. And here's one thing that I always do. I simply duplicate the roto, call that one with the drop shadow, shadow, and click on shadow only. Now I have a layer with only the shadow. And now let's play with the softness, go down with the opacity, and I can always reference the original shadow. I can also click over here on that camera icon and it takes a snapshot. And now when I'm here, I can click on that eye with the camera and I see what this looks like. Okay, so the shadow is way, way more blurred and a bit browner. So let's actually click on that brown tone here. And here is a really cool trick for you. Have you ever wondered how to deal with that window? So that's super easy. So we just clicked on the brown color of the door and now all of those colors are in the same color scheme. Everything that you see in that square. So we have the brown tone over here and the more we push it to the right side, it gets more saturated. So you see the old color here and the new color here. So basically left and right is your saturation and up and down is your brightness. So if we go all the way to the left, you see that makes total sense. It's from white to black. And if we go over here, it gets more saturated. So basically in that corner, this is the most saturated, brightest brown tone that we have for this specific brown value. So when we go back to that original brown tone here, you can now use those sliders to change the color. And now the saturation and brightness that you can find over here, so this is the hue, the color tone, the saturation and the brightness stays the same, but only the hue changes. So if you want to tint something, then this is the best way. Pick a color and then only change its hue. In that way, you stay in the same saturation and in the same brightness as the shot. But now let's switch back to our brown tone and choose this darker one for our shadow. And we can always check the color and that one is pretty close. So now let's just make it softer and therefore maybe we bring up the opacity a little bit more. And we have one issue now because you see, I still have the shadow over here, but I also want the door to cut out the shadow because the shadow should only be on the door. So therefore I can duplicate the first clip, call this one the door 
I have it on top of the roto and use it as an alpha mat. So for the track mat, I can go to alpha mat. And you see now the shadow gets cut off by the door. Another way to do it is to go back, deleting that layer again, and I can use an effect called set matte. And I bring it on the shadow, and for the shadow, I want an alpha channel, the one that we have masked out from the door. Let's call this one door now, so that we don't get confused. And for the set matte effect, I'm choosing the door. And when you take a look at this now, shadow doesn't get cut off. And this is because at the moment it takes the source from the door. But remember, we have drawn a mask on that. So you could pre-compose the door or simply use the mask on the door. And there we have it. So those are the two ways of doing that. Okay, now I told you that I also want to show you how to render a clip with an alpha channel. And I'm doing that now because when we continue working on that, I always have to have the roto brush effect on and that just takes some time to calculate for each frame. So let's just render out the roto and the shadow layer. And I have just those two on solo and I have defined the in and out point by hitting B for beginning and N for end. And now I can simply go to composition, add to render queue and that will automatically open up the render queue. And now we have to think about it. So we want to render out a clip with an alpha channel. So for the output, we can do two things. We can, for example, use a quick time. And here you have some settings. For example, you can use a ProRes 444 because when you click on that, in the video output, you can define which color channels you wanna have. And we wanna have the RGB plus the alpha channel. And for the color depth, that means you have millions of colors, which is RGB basically plus extra, plus the alpha channel. And let's quickly render that out. And I'm calling this ProRes 444 and hit render. And by the way, you can do the exact same thing when you send this to the media encoder. So composition, add to Adobe media encoder queue, and then you can render that out in the media encoder. But I'm also going to show you one more method on doing that because there's an other method on saving out the alpha channel without using a ProRes 444 file. And this is done by using an image sequence. And in that case, I think that also works pretty good. So back in here, let's go to composition, add to render queue. And also one thing that you need to know is in the render settings, in the time span, we have the work area only. And in that case, it only renders those few frames that we have defined. Remember when we hit B for beginning and N for end, you can also go to the length of the comp and it will render everything. But we don't want that. We only want the part that we have rotoed out. Okay, for the output this time, we don't want a video, but an image sequence. For example, a PNG sequence, because a PNG is an image that also can hold an alpha channel or for example, a TIFF sequence. So this is always the same. So we have chosen the P and G sequence for the channels. We want RGB plus the alpha channel, and this will make millions of colors plus. And now I simply hit okay, and I'm calling this P and G. And you see now it's called P and G underscore. And in the brackets, you have placeholders. And I'm going to show you why this is after we have rendered this. Now I'm going to import both. Here you can see all the material that I used for this tutorial. So the hair image and so on. And now I have the PNG file and it's actually called PNG 00229. And this is the frame number. And the next one is 230, 231 and so on and so on. And I also have the ProRes 444 file. So let's import the ProRes 444 at first, hit import bring it into a new composition and there you have a file with transparency and also our shadow is in there. Perfect, exactly what we wanted. So this is how to render out a video file with an alpha channel. Next one, I'm going to import again. And by the way, I'm just double clicking into the projects window and this opens up the import window. 
So in here, I'm clicking on the first PNG file, but I want to have the whole world sequence. And therefore I can enable PNG sequence and simply hit import. And now you can see it has imported it as a sequence. It's PNG 229 until 243. It's exactly the same, but wait a moment, why doesn't it have the same length? And this is something that's also super important and I got a lot of comments about that. So when we click on the progress 444 file, you see it has 25 frames a second because this is what I have shot. And the PNG doesn't really have a frames per second file because it's basically just a lot of frames. So you have to tell After Effects, shall I use 30 of those images for a second or shall I use 25 or what shall I basically do? So by default, when I click on it, it has 30 frames a second. And this is why this basically plays faster and therefore it doesn't have the same length. How can we change that? Nothing easier than that. We just right click on it, interpret the footage, main, and here we can define the frame rate. And we don't want 30, but 25, hit OK. And now we have 25 frames a second. Perfect. So back in our transition composition, we can delete both of those layers and simply bring in our PNG sequence and we are good to go. So now let's take care of all the color correction that needs to be done in here. So let's at first work on the background because when I open up the door, you can already see everything that's behind it. And this is quite nice, but not realistic. Have a look at the door clip by itself and disable the mask. And what you can see is everything is blown out because the camera was set up so that I am exposed right, but not the background. The background is overexposed. And now let's simply go to our background and I'm going to apply an exposure effect and set a keyframe. And yeah, this needs to be really blown out, maybe just like so. And once I'm out there, I bring this back to zero, maybe just like so. So now I'm just playing with those keyframes here. So once the door is almost open, I'm gonna make it look like it's an automatic exposure and therefore the door would do the opposite. So I'm simply doing the exact opposite here. Perfect. Next thing, I'm going to add an adjustment layer by hitting Control Shift Y and add a glow to this. And when the door gets opened, I'm just playing with the settings here. So the sky is blown out and I'm giving this a bit of a radius so it bursts over the door and then I go down with the intensity so that I still see something. So this is with and without. So the light shimmers into or onto the door. And then I go to the glow intensity and once it's open, I bring it to zero. Perfect. As a last step, what I also promised you is I'm going to show you how to animate the color temperature or how to work with that to integrate it better. And for that, I'm going to the transition and apply the Lumetri color to it. Because you see at the moment, it's pretty orange. And in the white balance selector, when I go down, it gets more and more bluish. Hey, and this somehow looks like it would match perfect to the background when we go outside here. You see? the blue outside the cold temperature matches to the door. So now let's set a keyframe over here. And while we are opening the door, we animate it. So I'm going back to zero. And you see, that just makes such a difference. From we are inside, it's warm. And as the door opens, let me quickly unsolo this. You see, this was before and this is after. So super cool. And maybe as a really last step, because I'm super close here to the door and you see that already this bull's eye is out of focus. So maybe let's bring out a camera lens blur, bring it onto our winter wonderland. And by default, it's always at five, bring it up a little bit, maybe like eight. So you see that the background is now a little bit blurred and not in full focus because the focus, as I told you, is somewhere maybe on my nose. Okay, but still we have to animate that. So I'm clicking on the blur radius and as the door opens, so here I'm already in focus. So let's also go down and still 
you can take your time and roto out those parts over here because yeah that just makes sense it's like maybe two frames where you see some sky in my hair that will basically take you five minutes or i really hope that you don't have that curly hair or even better why not wearing a hat because it's cold outside but anyways this is how to combine two completely different shots and walking through a door and making them look as just one shot and yes this is already the end of this tutorial so i really hope you learned something about combining different shots how to match one shot to another with exposure with color with depth of field and also with color temperature and i really hope you learned something about using masks in a clever way and if you did then feel free to give me a like a comment and subscribe to my channel because in that way i can do way more of those tutorials and i really love doing those tutorials but for now I wish you a lot of fun creating transitions in After Effects.